Isaiah chapter 5, verse 24. Talk about woes. Woe to a nation that has left God. Therefore, with the, with the result of these woes, therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, quick burning, and the flame consumeth the chaff, nothing left over. So their root shall be as rottenness, nothing left over to the root, decays, turns into the dirt, produces nothing, and their blossom shall go up as dust. Death. 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 From what? Rebelling against God. The wages of sin is death. And that's written to a Christian. I know we use it for lost people. These are God's people. Israel and, I mean, excuse me, Judah and Jerusalem. And I don't care you're God's people. You sin and you will die. You will face judgment. I mean, in the Old Testament, you read in the song, Chase after my enemies, O Lord. You read in the Old Testament, Get my enemies, kill them, Lord. And then you do wrong and you do wickedness and you expect what? God to bless you? God bless America? I don't think so. You know, if there's nothing sure about the word of God, that God loves the Jews and has special rights for the Jews, and the fact is that the Jews are still here today, you can't go up and walk to a Babylonian man there no more. You can't walk up to a true Sodomite, I mean a man that is from Sodom, the city. They're gone. Have a conversation with a nation before Noah. They're gone. Yet the Jews do live on. Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts. And despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. That's why they're going to go into captivity. They have not done what God has told them to do, and they're doing opposite of what God has told them to do, and not doing what God told them to do. You know, when you are a child of God, a Christian or an Old Testament Jew, and you do wrong, you will suffer worse punishment than anybody. Because you know better. A man will go into hell because of his rejection of Jesus Christ. He hears on the street, you must be born again. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, wow. who cares? A Christian will walk eternity in New Jerusalem without a crown, having a book that told him how to earn them. Now, which is worse? Which is worse? And I don't know, understand heaven and New Jerusalem and glory. I know there's no envy, but to a man that loses a crown and to a man that gains a crown, what happens? What do you think? I have no idea. I know preachers say, you know, all the things I could have done. I don't there's still a man that wears a crown. There's still a man that will wear crowns. And there will be men that have none. A man that goes into hell rejects Jesus Christ plain and simple. He didn't know any better. Now, I'm not excusing it. But a man that is saved and has the word of God and disobeys God knowing. Having the Holy Spirit indwell in his heart. Being a child of God. Think about that one. Therefore, is the anger of the Lord kindred against his people. Why? Because they have disobeyed the word. Now listen, if they disobey the word, and, and that's what it says, right? What do you think God's going to do to a Christian? 
I'm trying to bring this up to date today. I know we're talking about Jude and Jerusalem, but I'm trying to bring this into the church age. So what will God do to a man who is he's angry at with the word of God that he has rebelled against it? What will he do to a Christian that changes the word of God? And I'm only going to talk about what I know. Because there's a lot I've seen. I have heard preachers get up and say, you know, Jesus verily, verily say, well, truly, truly. That's changing the word of God. Now, if I don't go ye you know, all the world and preach the gospel, God is angry with me. If I don't judge myself, God is angry with me. What do you do when you step up there and say, well, you know, that mansion, he gives it, you know, just a house or whatever. He downgrades it. What do you think God is with that person? How about this one? Uh, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What do you do with a preacher that, that gives simple believism to say this prayer? What do you think God is with, with that man that changes the word of God? I'm not the perfect husband. I'm not the perfect dad. And I'm going to stand before Jesus Christ as a husband and as a father. And I have violated the Bible. And God has been angry with me. Let's bring it up to date. It's a modern Bible right there. There are things in the Bible that God has told me as a born-again Bible-believing Christian in 2000. 15 that I have not done and God is angry with me because he is my father and I am his son and he has stretched forth his hand against them you know the wickedness of Israel is still that I'm one of those judge programs uh, they were upset because their kids Bob Misma didn't get a disco ball Wow you know you're supposed to be welcoming in what you believe the Messiah hasn't come your 13 year old boy it's supposed to be the Messiah that's what you believe that's what they believe and you're angry bringing the Messiah they didn't have a disco ball And God is angry with them. Do you know what the tribulation and the great tribulation, what it's called, it's called Jacob's trouble? You see what Jerusalem and Judah are doing? As we go through Isaiah, he's going to tell them before God casts the judgment of Babylon upon him. He's going to tell them. He tells the church. And we keep going on like nothing's happening. And we keep praying for God to bless our worldly mess and our sins. Not going to happen. He smiteth them. The hills did tremble. Earthquakes. War. I read account, uh, I think it's all quiet in the Western Front, that when those bombs hit the ground, your body, if you're laying on the ground, jumps up in the air a few inches of not feet. <coughs> Excuse me. The hills trembled, and their carcass, dead bodies, were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. He will lift up an ensign, a, a flag, a banner, to the nations from far, and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed, swiftly, double speed. There are some people today that they'll live 90, 100 years old, die and go off into hell. 
And as far as you look, God bless their life. And there are Christians, you look at their life, man, they're getting it left and right, up and down. Now, I'm not saying it's all because of sin. Sometimes we are his children. We are supposed to behave. I remember my mom telling me as a little boy, we were going to go to someone's house. I tell my children, we were going to go to someone's house. You better be absolutely behavior. You better behave more than you do at home. Because you're representing your parents. You're representing God. You know why the world's in the mess it is in today? Because of sin? It's because the Christian is living in sin. And the Christian has become the excuse. How can you teach sodomite marriages are wrong when you've got churches out there who proclaim to have the Bible and proclaim to know God and don't and say, come on in? Because we want your cash and we want you to be a, a number in our church. That's what that's all about. Numbers and cash. None shall be weary nor stumble against them. No sleepiness or, or in, their, in their step. None shall slumber or sleep. Neither shall the, the girdle of their loins be loose. Nor the latch of their shoes be broken. They're marching. God is sending the people against Judah and Jerusalem. They're coming. Repent. Jesus is coming. Repent. Christian. Isaiah is not writing to lost people. He's writing to the Jews who are God's people. We need to clean up our lives and we need to repent. Never mind the lost people right now, but our own personal lives. Christian, that sin that you were involved in. What if the Lord came back? You're not thinking about the Lord because you're doing that sin. He is coming. You don't believe it because you're living in sin. Now, I don't know and I don't think so, but what if the last act that Christ caught you in would be displayed for all eternity? Now, I don't think so, but what if? Imagine when we meet up in the air in the clouds and you're caught with someone's not your wife and your wife come over and beat the crap out of you before the Lord. It's going to be revealed. Imagine a, a pastor being caught up in the rapture and there he's got a bottle of uh, a whiskey. Aha! Caught! Imagine if the rapture happens, God keeps the camels and the marbles in the mouth. Aha! That ain't holy smoke. Imagine if you're caught in a lie. Imagine denying the Lord so you can have friends in a good workplace and the Lord calls you right then and there. To Israel, the enemy's coming. You know, in some cases, Christians, the enemy is the Lord Jesus Christ. Saved. One of the preachers I, I, I know and respect, he said, a song that used to be sung was, Lord, wait a little longer. What? Well, I want my family to say, I got a dad's loss. I witnessed to him the first day I got saved, and he hasn't got saved yet. I have no blood in my hands. If he doesn't get saved, that's his trouble. I still want the Lord to come now. Whose arrows are sharp, ready for battle. And all their bowls bent. You read about the Antichrist? He has a bow but no arrow. Go back and do a study on the arrows in the Bible. Their horses, hooves, 
shall be counted as flint. They're ready to fire. Hard hoofs. And their wheels like a whirlwind. That would be uh, uh, chariots. If not, horsepower and wheels of vehicles. If it's yet to come. Now that flint is, is, is a dry rock. Was impossible for water to come out, but it was God that brought the water out. Flint is a hard, dry rock, and you want to do a study about horses, there must be something to their hoofs being hard and dry. I don't know. I don't know anything about horses. Their roaring, their war cry, shall be like a lion. Ooh. Your adversary, the devil, goes about a lion seeking who can. Listen, Satan wants to destroy Judah and Jerusalem. Jesus hasn't been born yet. So if he can get rid of Judah and Jerusalem, he will have complete 100% victory. Shall roar like young lions. Yea, they shall roar and lay hold of the prey. That's the Jews. Are the prey. And shall carry it away safe. Babylon. Some die in the land. Some are brought over. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo are brought over. Daniel. Dan means judge. L means Jehovah, God. God is their judge. And gives you a book of 12 chapters of fire and lions. Oh my. And a conquest over the, over the enemy. And in that day shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. If one look unto the land, behold darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. You know what the end of the tribulation period is? It's dark. The sun is turned off. The moon reflects no more light. Closed up. Then you see the light of the, tendle, the temple, uh, the tunnel. The Lord Jesus Christ coming. <laughs> 